It's nice to see you all. Well, almost all of you, not all of you, but. And we're going to start with um, some chanting. And the chanting is on page two here in our chanting book. It's called a dedication of offering. And please feel free to join us. You can mute yourself so you can chant as you want, but we don't end up as a lovely cacophony. I mean, people know that it's not, <laughs> it's not a secret that if people are not chanting together um, in, in, um, in, you know, according all together, it's not so helpful because people can't hear very well the kind of chant we do. So we do the, first, the chanting on page two and until the page um, Yo so bhagavan samma sambodo sawakato yena bhagavata dhammo supati panno yasa bhagavato sawakasango on universal well-being in English and that's on page 41 could you I have um, a page right in front of the chanting it's not a problem but it would be nice to clear it yeah Hmm. 
So, now, <clears throat> now let us join the reflection on universal well-being. May I abide in well-being, in freedom from affliction, in freedom from hostility, in freedom from your will, in freedom from anxiety, and may I maintain well-being in myself. May everyone abide in well-being, in freedom from hostility, in freedom from ill will, in freedom from anxiety, and may they maintain well-being in themselves. May all beings be released from all suffering, and may they not be parted from the good fortune they have attained. When they act upon intention, all beings are the owners of their action and inherit its results. Their future is born from such action, companion to such action, and its results will be their home. All actions with intention be the skillful or harmful of such acts, they will be the end. So we finish with the... We do the precept now. Yeah, 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 no, there is a plan. Yeah, so now we... Um, actually, I'm going to keep, keep the... The book with me just in case. <laughs> so we do the uh, the five precepts for those who want to take it. Yeah. So there's a request first of all, yeah. And the request, yeah. Page one two six. <coughs> Chami, 
we think the five precepts. <clears throat> <clears throat> Anati pata we ratmani sika padam samadiyami. Anati pata we ratmani sika padam samadiyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking the life of any living creatures. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking the life of any living creatures. Adina dana we ratmani sika padam samadiyami. Adina dana we ratmani sika padam samadiyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking that which is not given. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking that which is not given. Kame sumi chachara we ratmani sika padam samadiyami. Kame sumi chachara we ratmani sika padam samadiyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from sexual misconduct. I undertake the precept to refrain from sexual misconduct. Musa wada we ratmani sika padam samadiyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from lying. Sura meraya majapamadatana we ratmani sikapadam samadiyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from consuming intoxicating drink and drug, which leads to carelessness. I undertake the precept to refrain from consuming intoxicating drink and drugs, which leads to carelessness. Imani panchasi kapadani silena sugatinyanti silena boga sampada silena ni butinyanti tasama silong visotaye. So we can put our chanting book aside. So when you prepare yourself for sitting in meditation, make sure that your spine is elongated, your chin is slightly tucked in, right? Your sitting posture is comfortable for you and you sit on the floor or you sit on a chair, make sure you feel a certain amount of comfort. You know, when you don't torture yourself in trying to go into full lotus or, you know, so just cross-legged or chairs are fine. Yeah? So when we begin our practice, right, we um, can close our eyes. That's what is recommended in our tradition. You can close your eyes gently. Don't force them. You can also have the eyes slightly open. Mostly, this is to stop being distracted by the external objects right now, not to be distracted by what's going on around outside yourself. So as you close your eyes gently and you sit quietly, you will begin to feel the experience of just turning your attention inwardly. What does it feel to be sitting 
to feel the body sitting. And the most, one of the most important thing when you do this meditation is not to um, begin to make the body in a more difficult situation. You receive the experience that you are witnessing with a kind and gentle heart. There's no pressure. We're not going anywhere. We're not asking ourselves to be anything. We're just discovering what's happening in each moment. And as you do this, the mind little by little get the message. There's nothing to do. I don't have to become anything. And there's nowhere to go. So the mind gets a message. Maybe I can relax. <laughs> I don't need to think too much or to do anything. What you can do at the beginning, you can just gently sweep with mindfulness, right? Sweeping meditation from the top of your head down to your feet or your little toes. You can just go gently through the body noticing any tension, noticing any vibration or any kind of um, pain. Maybe you have some pain in your body that you're discovering or you have had for a while. And you can also um, feel that uh, the, the part of the body that feel relaxed and peaceful. You can also feel the tension, if you have any tension. So right now, we are with a knowing mind, the mind that sees, the mind that knows, the mind that is looking at all this in a peaceful way. It's a bit like giving a break for your to your mind. You just don't you don't criticize the mind. But you don't do any of that right now. You, the idea is to be simply witnessing with a kind heart whatever is arising, whatever you are noticing as you go. As I said earlier, through the body from the top of the head down to your feet without hurrying, without any project or ideas of how it should be or just as it is to look and witness things as they are. Noticing if you have any tension around your forehead, your eyebrows sometimes a bit tense. The idea is to relax the body. And the mind. If your mind continues to be chattering away at something that's not even here or has nothing to do with now, you can just gently return to the body, the feeling in the body. We often need to be reminded because we tend to run away with all kind of more interesting activity, like remembering what you did yesterday or what you did, what you will be doing tomorrow. So the mind thinks, think, think, think. 
there's all kinds of ideas and views and so on. So, there's nothing to do, nowhere to go, and you don't have to become anything right now. When you have come when you have come to the end of your sweeping meditation, sweeping the body, you can just continue the prayer practice by experiencing what the witness what the witness aspect of your mind is, you know, just seeing inwardly the thoughts that cross your mind the idea things should be different or the fear that you're not good enough or kind of mind is very creative He has no problem to distract yourself from the present moment. And to return to the present moment when you lost, you know, when you feel lost with all kinds of other things, thinking about the future or the past. Remember, when you think about the future or the past, is simply because you have been you know, you are really just following thoughts, following thoughts about the past, about the future. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's not judging your experience. You don't have to judge anything. But just get to know, get to know what's happening. And befriend it rather than hate it and think you've done something wrong. You befriend your mind. with kindness. Sometimes we remember things that are very painful or very disagreeable. So that takes patience to stay with that. It takes our ability to cultivate that quality of patience. And you? things which are unpleasant when we observe our internal world, internal life. And as you witness it, that witnessing is what helps those things to stop being grasped at.
Notice if you are <clears throat> lost to some kind of a stories or memories from the past and so on, just not to judge these things, but just to be aware of, to be back into the present moment and see how, what happened when you suddenly realize that you were lost into time, into many thoughts, many stories, and then you reestablish yourself into the now. What happens? How long do these things last? Do they stay? Do they go? It's interesting to observe.
Notice if your mind is still alert, vigilant. or sleepy or maybe tired so you bring the the light of mindfulness onto these moments and going back into the present moment you will see, you don't need to know in advance what happens. You will learn little by little the effect of this quality of consciousness, awareness, mindfulness. And that's how you become to see, you begin to feel that this important quality that we possess somehow not ours particularly, but it's just here now. And it transforms um, life.
mute your wherever you are you can start unmuting so you can hear what I say can you hear me okay <laughs> so <clears throat> don't you feel better after meditation or are you dying to go out and run and do something really speedy <laughs> So stretch your legs a little bit, relax your shoulders, you can stand up if you want for a few seconds, not too long, don't go too far. You want to see if that gentleman is okay? So <clears throat> I suggest that this session is, um, we have a time for question and answer, yeah? It can be a talk or question and answer. Sometimes a question and answer turns into a talk. <laughs> so um, please feel free to ask questions and don't feel embarrassed about your question because anything is as you know is valuable even when you get it wrong or what you think you're getting wrong so feel free please to ask questions and to maybe ask to be to have things clarified or maybe explain a little bit more or share some of the difficulties you have in your practice so that's what i'm here for i can if i can help if i can give be of service and help you then i'll be very happy and if you have any question you can put them in the chat there's one question in the chat actually maybe i should have a look at this question yes, <laughs> it's a bit late now hi could you please chant four noble truths thanks <laughs> it's a long sutta by the way the four noble truths <laughs> very long so maybe um maybe you 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 find the chanting on the website of amaravati and then you learn it yourself to how to chant it you know little by little so, is there any other questions? No? Yes. Who can see your message recording on? So that's something else. Alisa is asking a question. So what is it? Why isn't it on my computer? Uh, no, Alisa, some lady called Alisa is asking a question. Yeah, I just want to... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I would like to ask a question. Um, yes. Please. Hello. First of all, thank you so much for... So where, where are you, Isa? I don't see you. Isa, I, I've put my video on, but maybe... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Here you are. I can work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, um, oh, it's cut off a bit. Can you hear me? I can hear you very well, yes. Well, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm going to ask a question. Yes. Basically, please. while I was doing the meditation yeah. for quite quite a while... Yeah was not thinking about anything and I was in the present for quite a long time and I was thinking <laughs> well I'm here and now but why are then <laughs> and then my mind started to think oh I'm not hearing any thoughts or any memories and that's it I was observing that and I thought okay I'm gonna observe I'm observing this if this and that was it really and um, very few thoughts and memories 
of visual images came up, I was mainly in the here and now. So I was observing this and wondering why. But that's I was my question is, what yeah, what do you think of that? Uh, what's I was a bit lost because of this. What were you observing, by the way? I didn't. It wasn't clear to me. I was observing that I was in the here and now. <laughs> <laughs> was it new? <laughs> uh, you say yeah, what? To, what do way. I? Yeah, yeah, it was in some way. Yeah, I was surprised. So I was wondering. Um, yeah, and then I started after realizing it, observing it, that I was a bit getting a little bit uh, bored and a bit like I wanted some action. And then I observed that I was feeling really good as well, being in the here and now. So it's you were bit... feeling good about yourself being in the here and now. Yeah. 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 You were bored a little bit. Don't yes. worry, boredom is a very important men mental state in meditation. Yeah. Boredom means you just you wish it would be different and have something more fun. Yeah, yeah. It's called a you know it's it's a mental state which is just you want to get away from that, don't you? Yes, yeah. Yeah, and the mind is very creative. He'll will he'll find you a lot of project to to escape this horrible boredom. But That's... boredom is actually a very important uh, you know very important state, emotional or whatever you want to you know to define it. Because, um, you know, a lot of our mind is filled up with boredom. I mean, life can be really boring, let's face it, you know, right? Sometimes life is exciting and life can be boring. I was an expert in boredom myself. I never thought I was, but with the first year I was an Anagarika Chittas, I met boredom for the first time. I was too excited before. <laughs> you understand? I was like you. I hadn't seen the present moment and the peace of mind. And suddenly, this very peaceful mental state brought me this uh, a very unpleasant state of mind called boredom. <laughs> <laughs> I finally met Miss Boredom. And then, because I was in, I was really interested and curious about the Dharma and how things work, you know, I was really, really keen on it, you know. So I started to study boredom, you know, and um, I realized, I mean, I don't even remember, it's such a long time ago. Anyway, boredom went at some point, you know. What I mean is that I, I can say I am never bored. Why? Now I'm never bored because boredom before was really painful, difficult. I wanted to get rid of it. I felt it's a waste of time to spend time with boredom. <laughs> Why do I have to spend time with boredom? You know, boredom. I'm boring to spend time with boredom. So, you know, then I started to study it, to look at it, to really examine it, you know, and then I saw that boredom comes and go, you know. When you when when you you don't know what to do and you're looking for something to get moving in one direction or another, you know you nothing to do, nothing to do, nothing to work at. You know you you become bored, and there's nothing wrong with that. But at some point you can actually let give, let it go long enough in your life that it doesn't come back anymore. Do you understand? You don't call it boredom any, anymore. It has maybe another word. You don't know quite what to do. That's not a problem. You don't you just don't know quite what to do. How many times we don't know quite what to do with life? So instead of boredom and uh, kind of getting yourself into a very negative mental state or very lazy mental state, you know, you just don't want to be bothered. You know, you're just bored. You're depressed. I mean, boredom is a bit of a dip. It's not far from depression, from feeling depressed about something. You, you, yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy being bored as well, because I, then, then I also enjoy it. <laughs> to be so bored? Have, yeah, because I have a space of time that I don't need to do anything. Which oh, is really good. With the French people, I mean, they're always excited about this kind of thing, you know. <laughs> I'm just joking. Don't worry. No, but no. My, my question is: um, Is it like a good a good action to um, to either stay like that or to put an intention? You no, know? but what you said before is more important to me. It's like okay. <laughs> you enjoy being bored because you don't have. You said you didn't don't can't go anywhere or you don't you don't know where. No, because it's nice. I don't. I'm not. 
I, I it's like a restful, you know, it's restful. I can relax. I can stay still. I can. I yeah. Can... So it's not boredom anymore. It's just very nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Well, you've done the work. That's fine. That's right. I can have a break from work and that's really good. Yeah. Yeah, but I wouldn't call it boredom. I could you can you know boredom has always you know it's connected with a sort of negative state of mind, isn't it? You're bored. You you're disinterested. Mm. You know you don't want to be close to boredom. You don't want to be, you know. So you can find another word to do. You can relax. You know you can just uh, forget about going somewhere, being somebody, and doing things that you don't need to do. Because we're through boredom, we do a lot of things that just to basically to hide that that feeling of boredom, we get engaged into all kind of silly, stupid things, you know, mm. you get bored, you go to the fridge, you want to eat, you get bored, you want to phone people and talk for hours about nothing special. You see, so it's, it's good to study this boredom, it's, it comes together when we, um, you know, we, we expect in life to give us something, you know, that's not boring. When we expect in life to be exciting, we can feel quite bored when it's not exciting. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It's when things are really interesting, fascinating. And so we, we this is the opposite, you know, things are boring, miserable, uninterested, uninteresting, and so on. Yeah. Study it. Just just take time to be with it. Take time to know it and use this time that you take to look at it to let it go. Not by doing anything, just by witnessing it. This is a process of letting go. Okay. You understand? Because yeah. when you are observing something, you're not caught into clinging to that state of mind. Yeah, that was very useful that to do that actually good so, i'm very good. glad isa <laughs> nice to see you too yes likewise thank you so any other question yeah i've got one yeah yeah you can picture it you know especially someone like me retired already no no real worries for tomorrow in bed you know, quiet enough, what is the best way to go to sleep? You know, there are plenty of uh, medi guided meditation on the way, but, you know, the, the little mobile nearby, it is so easy to click it and uh, mm. pass out uh, with the guided meditation, but is it really the thing to do? Well, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I could, I couldn't, I could tell you, maybe I know this kind of, um, you know, situation. Yeah. And basically, I don't fight, you know, I just relax. And at some point, if I need to sleep, I sleep. You know, because if you start, if you start creating a project with falling asleep, it's going to wake you up, you understand? <laughs> you have to think of how to do it. Did the text, I read it correctly, did I begin with one, two, three? <laughs> did I do the, the work properly? She said you have to stretch your leg that direction. Am I doing this? You find yourself all croque, all kind of recroqueville with same French, you know, like with all, all your legs all tied it up, you know. <laughs> so I would just relax, you know. I mean, you have all the time. You can sleep a bit more in the morning, you know. And sleep is a bit of a habit. I mean, what I mean, it does well with a bit of a habit. Um, if you sleep at the same time, the same every, every day, you find it's easier for the message goes to the brain. It's kind of seem to, you know, I find that helpful. So if you want to, to sleep well, it's good to start maybe try if you can sleep regularly, you know, at a regular time, even if it's not convenient for you personally, it might be more uh, you know, useful for your, you know, to ease off this kind of wanting to sleep. If you want to sleep, you just know you want to sleep. And uh, it can be really disturbing because you want to sleep, you feel tired and so on. You know, 
there's no secret, I think. Don't drink coffee, don't drink, don't do, do something too exciting before you go to bed, you know, it's a relax, you know, and um, you, you'll sleep when you need to sleep. I mean, you can also, if you get very tired, you can take maybe a light sleeping pills or something. It can be a homeopathic sleeping pills or natural sleeping pills, you know, or allopathic, you know, but I would not go that way if you don't have to, you know what I mean? If you don't have a job at nine o'clock in the morning every day. Just give your mind the habit to sleep at a certain time. Yeah. And if you sleep a lot in the afternoon, for example, we could we maybe happens, you know, rest in the afternoon. You know, when we get older, we're not so into a very, very energetic exercise or you know activity. So the body doesn't get so tired. It doesn't need so much sleep, you know. Make sense? Yeah, what, what about the guided meditations? There what, so, what about? The guided meditation, there are so many available. Yeah. Do they work for you? Well, the, the, the point uh, that sometimes I ask myself is, uh, are you trying to get away by just uh, you know, being guided into meditation rather than uh, uh, sitting there? And yeah, but do, if it works for you, then fine. Do you fall asleep with a guided meditation? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you have found the one something that can help, you know. <laughs> yeah. And the main thing that is all in the background of our mind is that, are you worried about not sleeping enough? Yeah. Well, that's the one you have to look at, you know. Because this worry is agitating your mind and body. Do you understand? You are kind of maybe even irritated, you know, in the background. So watch out for these mental states because they could keep you awake for a long time. You know, I wish I could sleep, but I can't. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. So you speak worried, a bit louder. You're worried about something. So I, can't, can't, I, I can't sleep, hear you so well. If you can't sleep, yes. because you're worried, yeah. is that like a Sankara thing? You what? Is it a Sankara? Oh, Sankara. Oh, don't yeah. worry about your Sankara. You don't don't worry, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sankara is, yeah, it's a, it's a it's Sankara. It's a constructed thing, you know, it's a... But maybe also Mother Nature is asking you to, you know, to, to oh, yeah. maybe you are tired and you need sleep. You understand? But you can't sleep. But you can't sleep. Yeah, if you can't sleep and you're worried. Then... And it's a Sankara, that's in the books, that's fine, you know, but in the experience, you know. Okay. <laughs> As an experience, what would you call it? It's a damn difficult thing to bear with, you know. Yeah? It's a difficult thing to bear with, to not being able to sleep. I said to this gentleman, you know, just, I mean, if you don't have a job to do every every day at nine o'clock, you know, if you have your own time, I would uh, start just having a regular time to sleep. Because the body is like a machine, you know, it's like, a, it, it likes its little kind of a timetable, regular timetable, you can notice, you know, how you can do things without even thinking, you know, automatically, because you've done it a few times, and then it clicks into a, a kind of habit. You notice that? It just become more easy to do because it's become something habitual. So it knows what to do and you do it, you know, and, uh, but it's not, you know, sleep is, is you know, the, the, <clears throat> the activity of sleeping, not sleeping and so on. It's so connected with so many things, you know, it can be many causes that bring a lack of sleep. You know, and uh, the most important thing is not to get angry with it or not to get, you know, not to add some kind of agitation in your in yourself, you know. The idea, I mean, you fall asleep well when you start relaxing and uh, 
not minding sleeping or not sleeping, you know. Eating or drinking things that do not keep you, you know, pepped up for the whole night. The food you eat can be, you know, have an effect on how you sleep. Yeah, I had to cut down a lot of things. We don't eat anything in the afternoon except what we got just now. <laughs> it wakes you up completely. Some people know the, pro, the forest tradition, you know, we can eat certain things. We call it medicine in the, in the, in the, on the Buddhist path. It's called medicine. So we can have a bit of black chocolate, but that wakes you up, you know, it's full of energy. So, any other questions? Yeah, may I ask a question? Who is it? It's Al. Okay, Al. Thanks for the guided meditation. It was wonderful. My my question, and it'll probably be a very simple answer to it, but, but if, if you accept the Buddha's teachings in the Noble Truths, and you accept the uh, Buddha's teachings in rebirth, why would uh, a Buddhist ever have a child? Why would you ever bring a choose to be part of a volition exercise to bring a child into the world? Hang on, we're in trouble because what is this? What's the matter? That's a mic. You can just hear. Oh, it's a Mac. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't hear very clearly what you were saying, I'm afraid, Al. Well, I repeat it. Okay, I'll I'll get a little closer from you. My question is, if you accept the, the Noble Truths... If, it, if, if what? The Four Noble Truths? Yes, if you accept... I'll put it in the chat. I'll put it in the yeah. chat. He's going to put it in the chat. He's going to write I'll it down. That will be easier for me, yes. Thank okay, you. Okay, I'll do that. I think he was saying... <laughs> So if you accept the Four Noble Truths and rebirth, why would a Buddhist have children? Oh, <laughs> that's a that's a bit of an involved question, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah I wouldn't think about it. I, very often, children come without being invited. You notice that <laughs> they don't have a whole kind of philosophical background usually. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't thought, scratch their, 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 their hair and say, am I going to have a child if I'm a Buddhist and I'm on the Four Noble Truths, you know, oh my God. No, I don't see many people think like that, you know. Usually they come without, you know, without really even knowing they're coming, okay. So um, this is a question I don't particularly feel, you know, uh, I want to answer this question because basically I talk from my own experience, you know, and I haven't had any children. And I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a much bigger question than what you think, you know. It's a, so um, the affordable truths have nothing to do with are you going to have kids or not, by the way, right? What's the problem with having the Four Noble Truths? They are there to help you to understand the suffering of having a child when you don't want it, for example. <laughs> or not having a child when we want one. The Four Noble Truths talk about suffering. Okay, so what's the problem? The First Noble Truth is talking about the suffering encountered in the human realm. Right? It's not just having pain in the knee, which is part of the human realm. It's not having a headache, or it's it's really the story of living in, the, you know, guided by the ignorance, guided by delusion, guided by, do you understand? Mm -hmm. And this delusion, this uh, lack of guidance, you know, proper guidance and wrong guidance, uh, we, after studying the mind, after meditating, after following the Buddhist path, we begin to see that most of our human experience end up in suffering because we don't have the knowledge of the nature of our experiences. We don't know they are impermanent. 
We don't know they are painful. Eventually, if you cling to them, they are painful. Always. Okay? If things you want go away from you, it's painful, especially if you cling to them and you want them. If there are things that you don't want, that cling to you, you don't want them, whatever. I mean, I'm just making it very general, yeah? So it has nothing to do with, you know, why having babies, you know? I mean, maybe you have, you know, the, 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 I mean, just to go back to the noble truth, yeah? So you have the, 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 the recognition of the painfulness of this life, okay? And the Buddha is here to be, as is very often compared to a physician, who is bringing the medicine to deal with those pain, the suffering of a, a mind that is blind and ignorant and deluded. Yeah, but ignorance is not that people are stupid. It's not that people are illiterate or even uneducated or knowledgeable. Ignorance has to do with not knowing Dhamma. You understand? You don't know that things are changing. You don't know that things are painful. You don't know that things do not belong to you. That the ego, what you think you are, the personality, is not yours. It, it lives with you <laughs> and can create a lot of troubles. <laughs> but you can begin to see it in the light and the vision of Dhamma. Do you understand? So that's the second noble truth is about the cause. Okay. The cause of suffering comes from your desire for sense pleasure. You know, I mean, if you're French, we are experts on that. I'm French myself. I've lived in the life, like the country in English, it's the same thing, actually. It's not just the French. Everybody loves sense pleasure, right? What are we going to do? The Buddha doesn't take, doesn't say we should not have any sense pleasure, but if you're stupid and deluded, then you will cling to it, and then you'll make yourself miserable, you make other people miserable, when they don't want to stay with you, and you want them to stay, whether it's your mother, your father, your partner, your dog, your cat, whatever, yeah? Then the second cause is, um, you know, it's kind of a bit quick, going through it very quickly, Second cause is a desire for um, for wanting things, you know, wanting to become something. I want to be happy. I want to become happy, you know. So you're asking me, should I, you know, should people have babies, you know, with the four noble truths? That's not your business or my business. You know, if they want a full baby, leave them alone, you know. Don't ask them to sort of what to do with the four noble truths. If you, if you know the four noble truths, you shouldn't have a baby. Why not? It's not a, none of our business. Is it your business? <laughs> Unless you want a baby, you know, don't know. Do you understand? We don't have to make something, you know, like a kind of ID about things. You know, you go with life as it is, with the feet on the ground and just day by day, just see what works, you know. So, you know, and then the third cause of the, 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 the second noble truth is about not wanting to become so Ajahn Sumedho has always had a very easy way of explaining things, you know. So he would say, sometime to make understand, to make us understand, you know, what what that means. I mean, at a, at a at a certain level, he would say, you know, when you don't want to live anymore, you get depressed. People want to kill themselves. They don't want to become anything, anything. You know, how many people find they are desperate in front of life, you know, facing life. They feel a sense of desperation. They can't cope anymore. You don't want to become life. You don't want to be alive anymore. That's one aspect. You know, but there are many. Uh, you can use this for every aspect of your life. You know. You don't want to do something because you're fed up. You know. You don't want to become this person that somebody is asking you to become. Yeah. So that's the cause of the, the second noble truth. Is a cause you know, wanting, you know, sort of clinging to sense pleasure, wanting to, you know, desire for sense pleasure, sense pleasure, desire to become something and desire not to become. So it's another big subject, you understand? And then the, the third noble truth is the result of our practice is that you begin to feel 
you get to know little by little, you know, it's not a magic big bang experience. Little by little, you begin to, go to, to know the state of mind, or you could say the, 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 the ending of a state of mind, more like Niroda, it's called Niroda, and it means, a, a, you know, sort of the end, the cessation, the cessation of delusion. You can look at that very carefully during your day. You know, you look at something that bothers you, and you maybe you spend a little bit just to study it, you know, and when it ends, the feeling of ending of suffering, the feeling of ending of something that bothers you or that confuses you or whatever, you know, any things really. Maybe you feel cold and you say, you study cold and you at some point maybe things change. You're surprised. What you felt was cold is not cold anymore because you stop reacting to it. Do you understand? Yeah? Whereas before, you were in the background of your mind, you were aversion, aversion, I don't want this, I don't want this. Then you felt really irritated with the cold. But when you calm down and you relax and you're not, you're not fighting it, reacting it, to the, then what happened is that you're, there's more balance in yourself, you know. You can feel it, right, but you don't become it. <laughs> you become the cold otherwise. It infilt infiltrates you. <laughs> Do you understand? You have to experiment with these things, you know. So leave people having babies if they want, even if they are really interested by the vulnerable truth, please. Don't okay. don't go with an ideal like this. It's not good. <laughs> Life is not an ideal. <laughs> yeah? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Unless they ask you, I mean, if they ask you to have an opinion about it, of course you can give your opinion, there's no problem, you know, but be careful. Maybe they might have the baby they want because you told them some horrible thing about the vulnerable truth. Make, be careful, your responsibility is important. Okay. Last time you mentioned about flower dying and stinking badly. I am sorry, I didn't understand. Could you help me understand why you mentioned about a flower, please? Easy. What I was talking about, I think, is that, you know, uh, sense pleasure, maybe, and everything, you know, we learn through the practice of the Buddhist path, that everything changes. Everything moves on, right? So even the most beautiful flowers, gorgeous looking flowers that I've seen in my life, little by little, they just become like me. <laughs> From being a young woman, dancing all day long as a dancer, while I'm sitting on armchair, one armchair now, now, right? We get wrinkles. We get, you know, we slow down a bit when we want to go fast, maybe. You know, so I mentioned even beautiful flowers at some point when I look at my flowers, sometimes I've studied them, you know, I look at them for, I keep them there to study how they're going to die. Not that I want them to die, I still pour water on them, I still love them, send them meta and so on. You know, I want them to live. But what happened is that Mother Nature has another agenda, you know, it needs, they die eventually, and if you stay too close to them, they're actually quite smelly. And when they smell, it's not as nice as a nice smelling rose, you know, it's not quite the same. So we like flowers when they smell like beautiful roses, you know, a beautiful smell. And then when they, you know, when they actually, um, can't you whiz, whiz, whistle? No. Huh? Wither. Yeah. When they die or when they're getting, you know, wither. Wither? <laughs> I don't know if it is the right word. Weather. Eh? Weather. Weather, sort of weather. Then um, they're not so attractive, you see. So I have actually taught myself just to be with the beautiful flowers and seeing them weather. 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 That's right. Yeah. And it's really an interesting uh, teaching you get from those flowers, for example. I mean, you can get that from many things. 
you can see that everything at some point becomes really, I wouldn't say bo boring, but it's just your mind has a capacity not to be attached to things forever. Do you understand? If you leave it patiently to see how things, the cycle of things, that's what we do in the Vipassana. Okay? Something arises and it's like maybe a story you had 20 years ago with somebody say, oh God, here that comes again, you know, God, I've had enough of that. And then you, next time it's like, oh, that come again. And then, well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I kind of, well, enough of that. <laughs> and eventually your mind say, oh, come on, drop it. It's really boring. <laughs> Do you understand? What I mean is uninteresting. It's like the, 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 the withering flowers, you know, your mind can get, can see all kinds of things wither. Even your love affair can wither after a while. You just had enough. You know, so this is the nature of the mind. It doesn't, you know, it's not fascinating forever. Yeah, there's fascination and it's opposite. We know that. How many people kind of, you know, separate because they had enough of the husband or the wife they had and not so interesting after a while. So when I talk about withering flowers, it's just about that, really. Who is that lady? Julia Nelson. Where's Julia Nelson? Where's Julia? Are you here? Hi. <laughs> ah, okay, Julia. <laughs> Have I answered your question? Um, yeah, I, th I think so. Yes, thank you. Um, but I, 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 I guess my my thought really is um, that um, I mean personally, I, I know that I probably have an attachment to beautiful things. Of um, course. And um, I realise that it's important not to have a preference for things that are beautiful or that we may perceive to be ugly or or unpleasant but um i still it, it in life um art and beauty um for instance poetry they they um and 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 chanting sutra chanting they 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 lift us don't they they lift us Yes. So we, we don't want to be without those things altogether, do we? Well, you know, <clears throat> the tendency to think about Buddhism rather than to see and live this Buddhist path is what happened when you ask these questions, you see. Because if you think a poem is beautiful, there's no problem with that. If it lifts you up, it's no problem. What the Buddha is talking about is the point in your life when you suffer about something, if you don't suffer, let it be. Do you understand? The Buddha is treating the human mind for when it suffer. For the suffering, the suffering that the full noble truth is about coming to help us to go through that period when we suffer. So maybe your doubts will you suffer, make, will make you suffer. Another, maybe you're more Buddhist. You say, "Oh well, you know, maybe I should stop my poetry class because, you know, it's like the baby things. You know, it's like because, you know, it's so beautiful. But I'm not supposed to have beautiful things. You know, but that is not correct. Do you understand? That's not correct. That's not being with life as it is. Does it make you suffer? Your poetry? No, no. Well, you don't need any medicine then. No. Do you understand? What the Buddha is talking, I mean, it's a, it's a big topic. I mean, we, Buddha is including, uh, including ethic. Do you understand? Not harming any living being, not stealing, not lying, not sexual misconduct, not taking drugs and intoxicant and so on. Do you understand? That's part of the mind also. That's a big story about the mind. When you, you know, the suffering you, you that, that is caused by remorse and regret and so on and bad behavior and hurting people and harming people. 
is not talking about abandoning the poem that you're reading. You understand? Yeah? We're talking about when it hurts, you have a solution through the Buddhist teaching. Do you understand? But don't go into creating suffering to make sure you're a good Buddhist. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> I, I think so, yes. So you, you pile up a lot of suffering to make sure that you're doing the right thing. But, you know, the question is very good. It's not that it's a, an, you know, an, uh, not a good question. It's a good one. So somebody, is that, is that okay? You understand? So, for example, for me, I have limitation because I, I'm a Buddhist nun, so I can't do what everything I, I want, I, you know, I'm, a human being can do. You know, I'm not eating in the afternoon a big meal. I, I'm, I'm celibate. I am, you know, I can't do certain things. I can't, you know what I mean? I have limitation by my Vinaya, my monastic discipline. But, um, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to, you know, what the Buddha is talking is not just suffering only. It's a misery of clinging to things because that's when the harm and the pain and the destructive approach come to you, you know. If you cling to something, then you get a lot of misery because you're frightened for things to disappear. You don't you you become selfish basically. Do you understand? Yeah? Mm. It's a big topic. Something you study little by little. Thank you. You know, I, at some point I was reading poetry too myself and uh, I, I am not so interested in poetry anymore because I have, you know, I, I prefer the reality of my life here and now, you know, I find it much more interesting. That doesn't mean that you should not en enjoy your poetry. Some poetry are very beautiful, you know, but there was a time when I find, I'm, I, you know, in a way I'm at a, a stage where, you know, I find thoughts rather clumsy. <laughs> heavy and some thoughts are very beautiful you know though. some words are beautiful some poems are gorgeous so i'm making i'm having sign that we are getting very close to the end of this session unfortunately for me i really would like to carry on if i could but i think we have to really be reasonable Somebody is driving me back to Amaravati very kindly. I've got friends with me here going back to Amaravati. And so we can do the, at the end of this session, we can do the um, homage to the Buddha Dhamma Sangha. Chant the homage. Yeah. So. English or Pan? Um, <laughs> I haven't, I haven't chosen yet. Hang on. Okay. So, let me see. It's in page 25 or something, not 26. Well, it is one on 28, I think, or something. The closing homage. 28. That's it. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe it. I remember it. So, we can do, I know the Lord, not everybody finds it really helpful to say the Lord. I don't know, I don't mind that. So we can say it in, 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 in Thai, is it? <laughs> in Thai. In Thai. In Thai, it's very beautiful. It's a shame we can't do it, we don't do it in Thai. It's the most gorgeous chant. So. <clears throat> Sama Sambudho Bhagawa Budham Bhagavanta Mabhivate Sawakato Bhagavata Dhammo Dhammam Namasam Supati Pannu Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Sangha Namam 
And so we bow to the Buddha and we put that on my finger. I wish you a good a good uh, evening. It's been late now, but still. Yes. I've just heard that Ajahn Chandasiri will be teaching the same class next week. That's right. It will be online. And it will be online because and she's in Scotland. Here and hybrid here. In other words, it will be both here and in Scotland. That's right. It's a hybrid session like now. But as a teacher, she will be in her monastery in, in Scotland. Okay. Yes? Yes. <laughs>